What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 125 of Value Town. I'm Jan Man B, and joined today, of course, by Allie and Jackie. What's up, guys? Hello. Hey. Hello. How are we doing? Doing good. Doing good, doing man. Well. <laughs> Definitely good. doing well. So, how's your week been? Anything crazy happened so far? First couple days? Um. Well, I've been kind of memeing around, but today I like raced to legend with this priest deck that we'll talk about race in a bit. To legend. But yeah, like I've been like stuck stuck at like rank five for like ages, just like memeing around, but then I just I just couldn't lose with this priest deck. It was it was great. It's like you were so, trying you know, to lose or something and you weren't yeah. Well normally I am but <laughs> No, that's amazing. We could all use one of those decks or I, I could I could definitely use one of those decks to try right now. Uh, Allie, how about you? How's your week been? Yeah, it's going well. I uh, also sort of have been memeing around um, with Priest, kind of. Uh, but actually today I played a, a mid-range kind of Paladin deck that went really well for me. Um, so I think we're going to stick with that. But yeah, you know, it's, it's good. I like memeing, but yeah. I also like it in Legend. <laughs> 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 so it's finding, finding the balance between the two. It's so. funny, like where people decide to meme. They either meme in the very yeah. beginning when they're low rank, or they meme like when they get to, yeah when they get to rank fifteen or when they get to rank ten and they're getting, when they get to rank five and then they get the legend five. and then, they, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. they meme again. So uh, yeah. thanks Blizzard for letting giving us more opportunities <laughs> to meme throughout the <laughs> season, meme. right? Yeah, rank four is a fantastic one. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, fantastic. for sure. Great addition. You're like, oh, I can I can have a break from Pirate Warrior now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just play Renown's Darkness. <laughs> always That's like right. oh yes i can finally play time walk mage for one game <laughs> yeah. or something like, that. <laughs> something like that you cannot drop below this rank oh, i love that <laughs> i love that Thanks. message uh exactly. but yeah so anyways guys we got a lot to talk about today um for those of you tuning in maybe for the first time never heard of value town we are a uh hearthstone podcast where we talk about anything and everything that has to do with hearthstone including decks and uh, cards and the community and whatever's going on. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about it. And today we've got uh, a few, actually we've got the priest deck that Jackie Ch talked about. And then we were going to be doing like a mini mage spotlight. So we'll talk about a couple of decks as well as a couple of cards that might be underrated. Then we got some community news, just some, some funny things happening in the the community and uh, that's worth a talk and then um even a couple events too that just finished or at least one big event that finished and then mechatorx workshops back guys i know a lot of you've been waiting for it so we've got a few cards to talk about today some from you guys or some of the patrons as well as i know ali has one and then uh, actually jackie made one too and i made a couple so uh we were we've got a little flavor from Exciting. all of us exactly and then we've got some uh, questions from or email questions from some of you guys and you can email those at value town or value town at jmv.tv if you want us to read them out next week but um but yeah let's just talk about i guess we kind of already talked about our week but um anything else happened like just this weekend or any, any anything in terms of hearthstone um yeah, I mean, we're, we said we were going to um, talk about Mage a little bit later. I've still yeah. been playing a lot of my control. Um, well, it's actually not mine, but um, <laughs> a control <laughs> Mage with, with Elise and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, that's pretty much what I've been up to. I've been having a good time with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've also been um, supporting our teammate Control the Board in oh, yeah. Um, yeah. the recent Wild Tournament that's yes. going on. And he's <laughs> managed to make it to the top eight. So yeah. that's really yeah. exciting. Being, that's, uh, yeah. yeah, enjoying supporting him. Definitely awesome. Yeah, the wild tournaments was uh, was going on in all three regions. So I was trying to catch a little bit of. Uh, actually, I had to watch the vods because um, I, I did a tavern hero this past weekend. So that was a lot of fun on Sunday, oh, yeah. and I ended up playing in it. Like they made me play in it. So <laughs> yeah, it, it worked out because we have three. It, it was myself and two others that were organizing it. So it's like this couple, and Sarah decided that. Um, you know, it was totally cool if she admined it and, you know, was the official organizer of the the Tavern Hero so that me and Shane could play in it. So that's what we ended up doing. So I just, like, threw together – I did, like, a control warrior, a control priest, and then that, that shaman, one of the shamans that you, you brought or you, you uh, talked about last week, Jackie. And mm -hmm. uh, actually, it might have been my – it was my dragon warrior I talked about too. And then I used a priest. Yeah. Yeah. That, and um, we ended up playing it. Got, ended up getting third. I like ended up losing three two to. It's not um, bad. Yeah, yeah, 
ended up losing three two to uh, the person that finished ended up finished second. And it was one of those things where if I would have beaten him, then I would have had a great matchup against Shane. I ended up it was Shane as my co organizer. I ended up winning the thing. So <laughs> that, that would have been suspicious. I think I might have been on the front of Reddit. That would have been really really bad. <laughs> would you Rage. Would you have felt Rage. bad if you had won though? I actually would have felt bad because I, I, I didn't really, I didn't want to play. And then some of those guys are like, "Oh, you know, you talked about it on your show. It'd be awesome to have you play and stuff." I'm like, "All right, all right, I'll play." And then. That competitive side of me kind of took over, where I just can't like give up wins. Them I just can't <laughs> give up wins. Yeah. So what anyways, kind yeah. of? Oh, I was gonna say, what kind yeah. of decks do people bring? I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. You know, I so I you know the five minutes that I took to to find my lineup, I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna beat aggro, and I'm gonna be and and match up well against mage, right? So my three decks mm-hmm. did that, which ended up working out really well because a lot of people played Sham or, or a lot of people played druid. Agro Druid okay. and, and Mage. And then I, and I ran into a lot of Shaman. So th- those matchups were actually a lot of fun. Uh, thankfully, I didn't hit any Quest Rogue. The, quest, the guy who beat me, he beat me twice. And he was double elimination. He had a Quest Rogue with Anixia too. And I'm a freaking priest. I wanted to try oh, that. Was, Quest Rogue with Anixia. Oh, that was brutal. I was like, oh, wow. Dragonfire. It, it was one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, Anixia. True. Why the heck is he playing Anixia? And then and then he throws Anixia down. It's like I have a Dragonfire potion. And then you realize, oh, oh. <laughs> the, oh that's, <laughs> that's why. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So that was kind of brutal. But it, it ended up coming down to Hunter versus Priest in the end. And I just didn't draw very well. So, uh, um, but yeah, for the most part, it was it was those decks. Not nothing too un, you know unsimilar to what we see on ladder. Um, but the funniest moment during the the fireside. Was we did the hot wings challenge, right? And we we oh, uh, yeah. we were gonna do one at a time, like each hour. But it, it, we ended up being like everybody did it at the same time. So we had three people that volunteered to do it. They had to sign the waiver, you know, all that good stuff. And Crazy. the way it works is they make it for you, right, on demand. So whenever you know you request to do it, they literally put it in the fryer, you know, and, and make it, right? Yeah. And um, so they come out, and it's like this police light, you know, like this rotating oh, police light that's on you know this tray and they come out with the nah. 10 hot wings each so they, we had two guys and then sarah who's one of the co-organizers was one of the people that did it and so they start eating it and uh sarah's just like eating it like nothing she's it's like <laughs> not even <laughs> it's like it's just chips not, just seriously casually, not even yeah. Didn't even break us yeah she's like oh yeah there's like so much fat <laughs> on this thing it's uh, you know like and we're like okay and the guys are like oh man like what I get myself into. <laughs> oh. Like after like one, they were like that already. And one oh, of them yeah. in particular, I had to dab him. Like he was crying. His eyes were literally tears were coming down his eyes. So I was like dabbing his face with a napkin, you know, and just trying to yeah. keep him. And then, then his nose started running and I was like, nah, dude, nah, 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 I'm not, I'm not <laughs> touching so you're the gonna nose. Glad that you didn't do uh, it. Yes. Uh-huh. I, I'm not, I'm not uh-huh. touching the nose. So <laughs> you're going to have oh. to wipe your nose. But yeah, you're not allowed to drink anything. Like they do bring out milk and stuff for you afterwards, but you can't do it during the Dang. thing. Yeah. How many do you have to eat? Hard. Ten or? in six minutes. <laughs> oh, ten. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So Sarah ate seven, and she had she was mostly had an issue with just eating in six minutes. You know, eating ten in six minutes. So it, it was not the hotness at all. That's quite a lot. Yeah, honestly. yeah. Like, the guys did two and three, too. I think. <laughs> Both of them only did two or three. Oh my gosh. So no one completed it. it. She crushed them. No, no, nobody completed it. <laughs> You have to have strategy, man. You, you really do. Strategy. <laughs> you do. It's not easy exactly. eating. I mean, you'd have to like you know, be messy, like totally messy yeah. eating that thing. Anyways, it was a lot of fun. Preparation. <laughs> Definitely a lot of fun. Uh, I think next time we'll do it on Saturday so that we'll have even more people. But um, good, good stuff. Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, they took care of us too. They gave us uh, these two bundles of things to give away to people as well as two, um, three boxes of three of their sauces to give away too. So... Yeah, they were awesome to us. Nice. Um, all right, well, uh, why don't we jump into some decks? We'll get talking about decks, yeah. Let's and, do it. And uh, sure. all right, we were gonna we were gonna talk about your priest deck first. This 25, so 24 and five deck, right? Yeah. Talk to us about yeah. this. All right, here he is. Here it so, is. So, <laughs> I've been playing like tempo priest a lot, like since the start of the expansion, loads and loads. But re- more recently, I haven't been doing it as well with it. And so I kind of changed a few things up and like took out a lot of the reactive stuff like uh, Shadow of Pain and Potion of Madness and Orkney and replaced it with like a, a couple more 
three drops. So you've got the Blade Masters and the Tar Creepers, Creepers, but then also Light Warden as well. And I don't know why, we just started doing really well. Like, Light Warden isn't actually that bad. It's kind of like a, a Tunnel Trog or Mana Worm that's yeah. easier to kill, but can just OTK someone sometimes. Like, it's it's actually pretty good. And it's it's more about just reliably having a minion on turn one. Like, right. cause if you, if you go first and you don't have cleric on turn one, you just, you're just playing from behind and yeah. in a, in a deck that is needs to be ahead on the board. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was just crushing the whole lot of it with it. it, was, yeah. it was, well, if you great. get the, if you get the, um, light warden with a power shield too, there's very, very few things that are going to kill it right on turn one. So oh, yeah, yeah, I can totally actually. see that. <laughs> yeah. That's, see it spiraling out of control. That's really I think cool. It's, I think it's kind of weak to like the heavy control stuff. So things like Shaman, where they have like devolves and hexes, you get kind of screwed and like quest warrior. But it's pretty good against a lot of the aggro and mid rangey things. Pretty good against mage, good against aggro druid. So it was it was just really doing well against what everyone everyone else was playing. And just to do a quick rundown, it's it's um what is it? It's like sixteen total cards. So it's double circles. Double Binding Heal, Double Inner Fire, Double Light, Light Warden, Double North Shark Cleric, Double Power Word Shield, Double Divine Spirit, Double <laughs> Radiant Elemental, Double Shadow Visions, Double Wild Pyro, One Acolyte of Pain, that's interesting, Double in Injured Blade Master, Double Cabal Talon Priest, Double Tar Creeper, Double Priest of the Feast, and of course Lyra, right, to finish it off. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so it, yeah, I mean, the acolytes in there because I was originally playing acolytes, but then I kind of had to cut them to fit in the binding heel, the yeah, binding heels and light wardens, and yeah, I, I didn't know what else to cut other than acolyte. I think everyone else, everything else is kind of important. Acolytes not really that important. So, uh, as, I mean, so yeah. go ahead, Nally. I was gonna say, obviously, the idea is to, like get ahead on board, but do you ever find that you're just like struggling so much? Because there's never really, like AO. I mean, I guess there's pyromancers in it. Do you get away with AOE just by using the, the pyromancers? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I guess the idea of it is to like get ahead so that you don't need AOE. Mm -hmm. so, like right. you, you, we're trying to. It's almost like an aggro priest. Yeah, it, it totally is. Yeah, it feels like <laughs> yeah, yeah. like get on the board priest. as quick as you can and buff your minions as quick as you can and just kill them. Uh, so yeah. And I think the more you go towards that style, and like the less reactive cards you have, and the yeah. more aggressive cards you have, I think the better it actually is. Mm -hmm. I, think I guess a... you can always use Lyra to like fish, you know, for stuff. I mm -hmm. guess later yeah, in the game. That's true. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can get removal with Lyra, right? Yeah. Like if you need a yeah. Nova or something like that. Yeah, I, I think if, that's a really good exercise. Generally, I think a lot of people are always hedging, you know, with things like hex or you know like that shaman deck that we talked about last week right that didn't have any removal anything outside of like one mm. maelstrom or maybe two maelstroms but um you know building aggro decks that literally have no removal is sometimes really <laughs> good you know like you just understand it better right your draws are better like your your consistency is better um yeah because it's like like cards like potion of madness which is so good mm -hmm. but they're very like polarized either they're really good and you get like a really good potion of madness or they're just useless sitting in your hand doing nothing and in a deck that's trying to be aggressive i don't think you really want these cards that are sitting in your hand like i'm not saying potion of madness is a bad card like potion of madness is great but i actually yeah. did better without it in the deck and a lot of the games i was losing before i switched to this deck mm -hmm. i would just have a hand of shadow of pains and potion of madnesses when i wanted to try and be aggressive Gosh, I'm excited to try this. Yeah, I, 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 have, I haven't tried it yet, but it looks like a lot of fun, honestly. So Binding Hill, is Binding Hill purely for Mage, or is there a, a different thing for it? Um, it? I mean, it's great. It's fantastic with um, Cleric, with Blade, especially with Injured Blade Master. Oh, um, like, oh, so many true. times you get, like, Cleric on one, uh, Radiant Elemental on turn two, and then Blade Master Binding Heal on turn three, and that's, like, really good. It's just, like, it's just a great card for tempo. Um, obviously, it's very good against Mage as well. But I, I didn't like Binding Heal when I first saw the card. But the more I've played it, the more I like it. Yeah, it seems to always be just what you need. <laughs> you know, it's mm. like you know, your Priest mm. of the Feast is about to die or something, and you heal it, or or even Lyra, right? Just just healing yeah. whatever, just to get get um, five health to your hero, and just cycling it is like amazing. Um, mm. Just just having those cheap spells too mm. when Lyra comes around is like super super nice 
Yeah, um, for sure. Did you get, what was your, I don't know if you remember, but did you have like a really crazy light warden just like smack him in the face? Uh, yeah, I had one like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, 19 and 19? 19? Oh my yeah, yeah. god. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had one game where I was like, I had, I had two, two light wardens oh, yeah. protected by a tar creeper and they were both like 9 oh. and 2 and like an 11 2. And my opponent just conceded. Like, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, man, great. that's like the pyro <laughs> circle of healing dreams, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get those crazy. Crazy Jack, you're gonna break the meta here. I know. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? As long as you don't post <laughs> it on Reddit, or as long as you don't stream it, you're good. <laughs> yeah. No, I was doing it all day, so <laughs> maybe if I allowed it tomorrow. Who knows? Oh man, I was gonna, I was gonna say, do you think that this deck is like because it doesn't run like deaths and and pains and dragonfire potions? Do you think eventually, if people knew the list it like it would be much easier to play against like the win rate wouldn't be as good like i it's possible but it also just seems like it doesn't matter like if it just spirals out of control it'll just spiral out of control there's not much people can do uh a little bit yeah i think i mean as soon as you know like any deck i think it's like when you know how to play around something i think it's yeah it's like the matchup will go down so like when people know the list and if it ever did become common like the win rate would become less i think yeah but yeah I think it is very good at getting on the board early and when you're on like as soon as you've got something that's stuck on the board you're in a great position to go and win the game because you can just take advantage of it so easily with like all the heals and all mm -hmm. the cheap tempo cards but right. um yeah and you have the divine spirit inner fire burst so what's the on average what what health total did you take them down from on average I have no idea. I killed someone from 32 health. There was, a, there, was, there was a mage that had like, you'd oh, used ice man. on 32 and just okay. slapped him for like 40 damage. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah. Like definitely popping try ice block at 32 health. I know, it was very weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely try it's this. Uh, try, try this deck out, guys. And Shadow Vision obviously can give you even mul multiples of Divine Spirit and in, in Air Fire, too. That's so true. that could be really nice. Uh, I kind of love right. Shadow Vision as a card. Dude, so Shadow Vision, I mean, it was one of my top five cards when we were doing the top yeah. five show, and it's still it. I I think it's just so beautifully designed, and it's it's such I a contrast it. to Primordial Glyph. You know, we talked about it last week. It's mm -hmm. They're the similar cards, and one's designed perfectly, and the other one is not, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Crazy. I think that's why I like Priest so much right now is because of that card. Like, you can do some crazy things with it. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Cool. Okay, well, um, you know, we obviously... We're talking about priests just because Jackie had this amazing run with it. But the plan was to talk about mage and um, <laughs> to talk about just some mage decks and, you know, maybe just have a, a quick discussion about, you know, why mage is good or maybe some uh, underrated cards and things like that. So we have a Kazakus mage that, uh, was it Jackie or was it? Uh, yeah, this is my Jackie. deck again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go to Jackie first. Uh, yeah, so Kazakus mage, yes, with no healing, right? Uh, except for Alex yeah <laughs> i mean that's the problem it's it's kind of because a lot obviously a lot of people have been playing like the gunther style mage and it's very like, definitely one of the strongest decks right now yeah um but sometimes you can get um like a lot of people have started running rep and removal and medivh is you super reliant on medivh to mm -hmm. win control mm -hmm. matchups with right. the gunther mage i feel um so if they destroy your weapon then you just kind of screwed so i was trying kazakus and it was actually pretty good. Like, Kazakus is a way of getting heal because obviously you can get the armor. Um, yeah. so five mana, you can get like seven armor. Ten mana, you can get mm -hmm. ten armor, I think it is. Um, and Kazakus is just broken. Like, it's it's really, really good. It's and so good. a lot is of the really? Gunther Mages, okay. yeah, a lot of the Gunther Mages only, like, they run a lot of one ofs anyway. Like, they run like one Meteor, one Polymorph, one like a Valkoria. So it's not that different. The only thing you're missing out on is obviously the. The mana worms and the archonologists having two of each of them is really really mm. good but kazakas is just kazakas is great um and it, it, this deck's been doing pretty well on ladder for me so, yeah. yeah i like the harrison jones in it too what, what do you find yeah, yourself using really what do you find yourself using a lot from kazakas is it the the resurrects or is it the card draws or <laughs> what exactly from kazakas um i mean a lot of the time it's the deal the armor has been Armor has been yeah, very good. Because of the that. lack of heal right now, right. Um, armor has been really useful. But also the deal four to all on five mana is mm -hmm. always very, very good against aggro. Um, and against the control decks, just summon three, summon an eight, eight, eight burn to face. Because we still have 
quite a lot of burn in the deck. I'm still running Pyroblast, so it's it is very similar in playstyle to to the Gunther Mage, but it's very it's it's just got more value, and you just basically you just beat every control deck you're ever going to meet because you've at least Cabalist Tome, Medivh, you've got <laughs> yeah, Kazakas. In this There's so much value. Yeah. It's crazy. It seems like ages since I played Kazakus Mage or Kazakus Priest, but it wasn't right. that long ago, and I just like. I don't know the fact that Brand's gone. It's like, oh, Kazakus is no good anymore, but Dep it's still good. It actually still is good. Definitely yeah. took a hit there. Yeah, a little bit of a hit, but still very strong. Very very strong. Yeah, I mean, without Re like Reno is such a big deal. Like not oh, having God. healing is, is such a rip. Pain in the ass, I miss but... Reno. I know. Yeah. It, it was nice seeing Reno watching some of those wild tournaments this weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. But, um, okay, it's, yeah, I, I don't think this deck is quite as strong as the uh, the lists that are popular at the top of ladder, but it's definitely a lot of fun. Um, so if anyone was look, seeing lots of mages going around, wanted a bit of fun, I would definitely recommend giving this deck a go. All right, yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, again, it's going to be in the notes, guys. You know, instead of um, having to go through all these cards every single time, j definitely check out the notes, which will be posted on the uh, the VOD and uh, on the website too, chainmv.tv. You can find it find it there. And we'll try to provide the codes too. I'll, I'll probably get the codes from these guys so that we can put it there. And you guys can enter it into your deck slots much, much easier. Uh, oh, the next, right? I that know, new right? ability is so, is so oh, amazing. Oh, God, it's I so love good. It. So good. So great. All right, Ali, you brought a, a, a Medivh Mage. So another Medivh yes. Mage here, but a little bit different though. Yeah, it's a little different. I got this from the, the player, uh, Teray. And uh, it's, ba it's basically Gunther Mage, but uh, with Elise in it. And you know, I, someone brought it up in my chat. They're like, oh, well, you know, does having a lease in it, is it counterintuitive to your to your game plan? You know, because you don't really want to draw the pack. You want to draw your cards so that you can burn them faster. But I don't know. I, I really, really like it. Sometimes the, the body is actually mm -hmm. really relevant. Um, and also the pack just can help you with, you know, control matchups. And so I've really, really been enjoying this quite a bit. I've been playing it, I think, the most this season. And I've had, like, Quite a bit of success with it. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, you could swap it out. Like I said, it's very similar to just a normal Gunther Mage, but you could potentially swap out the Elise for an Eater of Secrets. And I uh, can we talk about Eater of Secrets for a second? Because I just like, <laughs> I, like it's the most it triggering thing world. in the world. I just don't even know how to really feel about it because I I don't like the card really. Like I you know I, I tried swapping out one Volcanic Potion in this list and putting in the Eater of Secrets and pretty much the majority of the time I was like, oh, I'd much rather just have a second Volcanic Potion. But, you know, sometimes in the mirror, like I said, that's why I think maybe the Elise swap might actually be a little bit better than the second potion because of the aggro druids and the meta and everything. But um, yeah, I just, I can't bring myself <laughs> to like Eater of Secrets, but I know it's so relevant in the mirror. Yeah, I I've know. played so many like control Mage yeah. mirrors, or like I've been playing like my Kazakus Mage against like Control Mage, and you're playing the game, you're like planning out how you're gonna win, you feel like you're doing really well, and then suddenly <laughs> you <laughs> really just, just ends yeah. the game on the spot. Like, well, so. you know, what's funny is that as bad as Eater of Secrets is, we used to have Kazan Mystic, all right, that we used to be oh, I out love there. That card. I know, yeah, and we, we would steal the secret. <laughs> it was just, yeah. can you imagine how bad it was? Back God, then? imagine that in the meta right now. I know, now. that would be Ooh, so be broken spicy. crazy. That would have yeah. to be broken. Yeah, well, think about all the secret mages. Like, actually, well, I feel like there aren't as many secret mages now as just Gunther mages, but still, it would, it would be insane. It's an ice block. I mean, it, you know, like, oh, yeah. you're going to get it. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, Eater of Secrets is really good right now, but I don't know. It seems to be keeping it tempered, you know what I mean? Keeping the, the mage a bit under control, or yeah. at least those kind of cards. And that's pretty much what it was made to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Elise is cool. Like, I have to say, like, I, I ran Elise in both my Control Warrior and Priest this past weekend, and mm -hmm. man, it performed super well. I mean, I, I don't I know if it was these. just lucky, like, you know, just with what I was Maybe. getting, but it was, yeah, I mean, there's so many cards. There's so many, you know, cross class cards that are very useful. You know, and like Vile Spine. Vile Spine's amazing, yeah. like with mm -hmm. whatever class. I love when I get elemental synergy. Mm -hmm. Like you get the four or five. Yeah. Like a, a couple of times, yeah. I'll actually get like two cards that go together, and I'm like, yes, yeah. and actually like <laughs> cast Calimos next turn. I get Calimos yeah. a lot from. Oh, yeah, yes. right. I don't know about you I guys. Get I get sometimes. Oh, do you? Okay, okay. Yeah, is <laughs> obviously fun. Sick. 
Um, but yeah, at least it's a lot of fun. So I, I think that even if you, maybe you ditch her just for, <laughs> to be smart, you're going to give up fun though. You're going to give up a lot of fun, uh, dropping her. Yeah. She does have the feel was... of the old Elise. Like it doesn't feel bad to drop her. It's just like the old Elise, you know, yeah, turn four is not I... that bad. Now this one turned five. It, it, it feels fine. Most I was time. really narrow minded when it came to this card when they or when they were announcing it for Enguro, like, I guess I was just so set on the old Elise. I was like, the old Elise is just better. Yeah. Um, and so I, I've been pleasantly surprised at how much I like the new Elise, honestly. Yeah. And I just didn't expect yeah. to like it as much as I do. <laughs> no, so. I think the, I think one of the best things about this Elise over the other Elise is that the old Elise, you'd be, you'd have a load of like reactive cards in your deck, like say playing warrior and you've got like brawls and executes. And, executes, and then as right. soon as you use the monkey, all those executes and brawls are gone and you don't know what you totally. got. Whereas with this Elise, you still have all your other reactive cards, but just these extra as well. So there's no there's no like downside really. Totally. Right. So yeah. you can you just throw it in way more decks. That's true. It's great. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. definitely true. Um yeah. okay, well, I mean I think those are the decks that we were gonna talk about, but why don't we talk about a couple cards that are um that are underrated in the class? And let me bring one up real quick. So the first one we're going to talk about is a legendary, and it is Pyros, which we've been starting to see more and more of, which is really cool because originally when we were thinking of Pyros, I think a lot of people are like, oh, this card is terrible. You know, like you, you get a bunch of vanilla cards, right? It's like, how, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. But yeah, I, mean, when... I think people are starting to realize that there's there's purpose for this card, and it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, like when before the expansion, when I first saw, saw Pyros, I was like, "Oh my god, there's so much value a, a, attached to a two mana card. This is gonna be amazing." <laughs> yeah. But then, no one as soon as the expansion came out, it wasn't seeing any play at all. Mm -hmm. And it's only yeah. recently that it's uh, started to be played. And I've been playing it in my Kazakas list and loving it. It's, it's great. I think. My my story <laughs> with Pyros is, I. I opened up a golden one, like when I was opening oh, up my, in my when I was opening my packs in the first week of the expansion or something, and I was like, "Oh my god, I got a golden pyros! I have to make like an elemental mage deck around this <laughs> like, specifically because I opened I opened that card, and it, it didn't work. It didn't work, but um, and I didn't uh, revisit pyros until you know, yeah, it's been like sh uh, showing up in secret, um, secret mage, you know, as a good value card, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, I like it. A, a lot and we were talking the other day and i just want to bring it up again but the idea of molten reflectioning this could yes. i don't know how <laughs> but it, it could but it could be cool i don't know how but um Hon yeah i i think it's great honestly if devolve wasn't in the meta i think pirates yeah, would be super devolve. good right now it's devolve um, but you got a golden one that's like a three <laughs> for one gold right <laughs> right you get a gold six six right yeah the you, yes you do, you do. and, and a, the and a, 10 10 right that's awesome yes the animation is so beautiful too so yeah. oh yeah i okay. just love this card one of, yeah one of the I, other uh problems with pyros in the matter is uh potion of madness potion okay. of madness oh, can really yeah. screw you over so especially in the like the, if they're, they're playing like a control heavy priest and it's that. basically just who mm -hmm. can outvalue who and as soon as they put your madness pyros and kill it in your minion you just you it's give like, up so much value. It's ridiculous. Have you ever seen a mage frostbolt his own pyrus? <laughs> Have you oh, ever wow. seen any? No, I, I okay. haven't. No. I've never seen it either. But <laughs> you... a lot of the time, what the priests do though is they like potion of potion man as the pyrus and then just shadow and pain the pyrus. And, yeah, and so they yeah. get the six six back in the hand. That makes sense. Um, wow. That totally makes sense. Uh, so yeah. I've been seeing some pyrus in uh, a Nazoth deck too. You know that those type of decks, just because yeah. you know you you get the both the uh, six six and the two two right if you do it. So there's different ways to look at this card. That's why it's so dynamic. It's, you know, it's an elemental. It's got the value aspect. It's also got the death rattle aspect, um, and really flexible and was much better. This is definitely one of the cards I underrated the most. In, um, looking at it. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next card we're going to talk about, and I think Jackie, you wanted to bring this one up, was Cabal Lackey. Uh. Is it because it rhymes with your name? Yeah. Lucky <laughs> yeah, Chan. Exactly. <laughs> no. Um, well, the, the the weird thing about it is that Secret Mage has become really 
popular and it's definitely one of the strongest aggressive decks right now. Yeah. But as I've been trying Secret Mage, I found Cabal Lackeys to be one of the most awkward cards because mm. you don't really you don't want to play on turn one because using counter spell on turn one is terrible, especially if your opponent has the coin. Yeah. Um, using Mirror Entity is generally really bad on turn one as well. Um, and you, with Lackey, because it's only a 2-1 body, you can end up running out of cards really quickly if you're just dropping a 1-mana 2-1, playing the secret that is going to get very little value early in the game. Mm -hmm. um, the only time I found it actually useful to play Lackey is turn like 3 or 4 if you're combining it with like a Valet or something like that and having good tempo in like the mid game. But I actually don't like two Cabal Lackeys in Secret Mage right now. I think, I feel like one is, one is good. But two is yeah, I can see that. that good. Yeah. I can see that. People are playing Kieran Tor more, anyways. You know, and it seems yeah. to be fitting the curve a bit more. Yeah, I remember the first like week that Secret Mage, you know, started becoming really popular. I was playing a version uh, that had both of the Cabal Lackeys in it, and I feel like those were the games that just really, really spiraled spiraled out of control like super quickly. Like and I, it was weird. It didn't it worked in the first like couple of days of me playing this like super like hyper um fast secret mage deck with the lackeys. And then it, it slowly like just didn't didn't work as well for me later on. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's a card that helps kind of like spiral things out of control if you've got a couple mana worms, mm -hmm. you know, down mm -hmm. and it just like you just go crazy and your opponent's like, uh what? just happened yep. um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah i don't i don't know exactly how how much i like the card but um there might be a place for him but yeah maybe a one of i think it would have been cool if the either the arcanist or the um you know the new five five that's you know free whenever you're playing secrets um oh yeah it would have oh, been cool yeah. if it was you know um it, it would do it some like like every single secret that you cast on that particular turn, you know, you would get some kind of uh, bonus from that. So in terms of like the Arcanist, if it was more like Questing Adventure or something like that, I think, you know, if something like Cabal Lackey would probably be more useful just because you're, you're just getting free cards, right? Being able to play free, free spells and things like, or secrets in this particular yeah. case and buffing something else. You just see yeah. that with other classes and, and Mage doesn't have anything like that. So I think that's yeah. one of the, the things that makes it a little bit weaker, you know, and we don't see those other cards as much because of that. But um, I, feel like, mm. I feel like Mage is so strong though that if we <laughs> gave it that, if we gave it that true. ability or like that That's option, true. you know, like questing adventure but Mage version, it could just <laughs> really, really. Like, Let's just not play any other classes. Of control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I agree with that. I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I mean, so... Maybe I haven't actually tried questing adventure and mage. Maybe that could actually be a thing because you like primordial glyph on turn two and get like a That's zero good... mana yeah. spell and like Oh, okay. Um, now we're <laughs> Yeah. I mean it's as good as not being able I mean we can't stealth it anymore, right? So I mean mm. rogues rogues are Yeah. Might true. it might be closer to what a rogue has to do now with questing. Um Mm. Okay, well, anyways, we just yeah, want to talk about right. a couple cards that are underrated. And we might start doing that more and more, just talking about classes. We were doing these spotlight class spotlights before, but it wasn't quite exactly what I was hoping for. So we might just do these mini ones where we talk about, you know, again, decks and then some cards that are that might be overlooked right now. Uh, but let's see. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, let's see. Oh, we're going to do community news next. That's what we're going to do. Um, actually, before we do that, I do want to give a, a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Game Coach, which is a coaching site. And any folks that are looking to um, just improve their ranking, you know, maybe you've been in the like rank 15 or 12 or something like that, and you want to kind of get better at the game and, and learn some just tactics or just some techniques or things to look for, uh, getting a coach is a, a really good way to do that. And I highly recommend it, to be honest. And Game Coach is a perfect place to do that. They have coaches for League of Legends, CSGO, Overwatch, as well as Hearthstone. And uh, you can pick from a various, it's really easy to use too. Just go to game-coach.com. And if you use the Value Town promo, just all caps, Value Town, you get a 10% off discount from you know your first session. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. I, I remember I, I remember having this discussion with somebody one time, like a friend of mine, it was back in the Starcraft days and you know, we were getting, I mean, we were always gamers, but we, he, he finally ended up signing up for coaching, you know, from one of the pros. I forgot who it was at mm -hmm. the time. 
And I was like, oh my God, you're paying for coaching for both of any video games? Are you serious? And then he was like, he was like looking at me and he's like, dude, do you pay for, you know, like, you know, golf coach, you know, like golf, golf lessons or tennis lessons or things like that? Cause I play those. And, and I'm like, yeah, I do. And it's like, how often do you play golf and tennis? And I'm like, ah, you know, I play a couple times a week. How often do you play StarCraft? And I'm like, oh, that's true. I play it every single night. And it's like, well, there you go. And I'm like, oh, okay, that totally makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Ever since then, you know, I was like, I actually did take some coaching back, way back when uh, in StarCraft. So um, coaching is a great thing, guys. And, and it's really that. It's like you spend so much time playing Hearthstone, you might as well, you know, like spend a, spend a little bit of money that you would normally be spending, I don't know, doing something else, trying to get better at something else. Why not get better at, at Hearthstone? Uh, so anyways, yeah. yeah, check out Game Coach, guys. And, uh, you know, big thanks to them for sponsoring the episode, as well as our patrons, of course. It's, uh, you know, you guys are the um, the foundation for the show, you know, like the support of the show. We would not be able to do the show without you guys. And um, you can support the show at patreon.com slash value town. Always want to give a shout out to some of the folks each and every episode. So big shout out to Mike T, our, our legendary producer, as always. And then some others, Ed H, Bob K, Nathan J., Old Man Riv, Zach P, Johnson C, Grant A, Code Chemist, Champ C, Michael S, Richard G, Shane F, Chris C, it's not me, and it's Thomas O. <laughs> yeah. That rhymed, Chris C, but not me. Yeah, exactly. I thought you were going to stop investing in rap. <laughs> oh, man. We had requests for you rap, man, so we might have to actually do that eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe one day. Absolutely. <laughs> now, thank you so much, guys. And again, you know, any amount, if you guys want to contribute to the show, it helps, like a quarter, a a dollar goes a long ways to helping us again improve the show and do some cool things with it. Um, all right, why don't we talk about some community news? Uh, we had we had a couple a couple things. Um, first, why don't we talk about the events first? So we had uh, Star Ladder conclude, and for those who are not familiar with Star Ladder, it's a tournament series or a, um, you know, just a tournament that that goes on for months and months and months, and uh, it culminated in Kiev this past weekend. And we had a lot of top players there. And Zelay ended up winning over RDU in the end. So um, big win for Zelay. And Zelay, you know, he's been, actually, he's been a host on the show too. And, and he's obviously a, a frequent guest on the show. So proud of him for, for pulling that out. And he's finished close many, many times too. Uh, so this is a pretty big win. Starlighter is definitely a big tournament. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. Super good to see. Good to see Zelay do well. His um, yeah. one of his decks was quite interesting actually. He had a yeah, it was the power. Deck that yeah, had, let me bring this um, up. Yeah. The two of the interesting cards were he had Black Knight and Ooh. Anixia. Um, yeah, cool. Let me, let me bring this site up, and this is from a uh, let's see Kilku. They did they did this awesome <laughs> article that just summarized the entire event. So you guys should check that out. Um, it's in the notes too. But talking about this Paladin. Where is it? Here it is. Yeah, like a lot of the um, the slower paladins that people are running right now, they play the curator, and then they have like primordial drake, which is the dragon to uh, that you want to be drake, but you want to curate on server, and then primordial mm -hmm. drake on eight. But it's, he's not playing primordial drake at all, and he's taking a more aggressive. It's it's like a, a, a more aggressive take yeah, on the mid range paladin. Yeah, I like paladin. it. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's pretty cool. Oh, man. And also vine cleaver. He's playing vine cleaver, love... baby. Oh, right. He's vine playing. Yes, vine dude, cleaver. that's awesome. <laughs> And Anixia, it's, it's, too. It's so good. Yeah, like, yeah. One thing about Vine Cleaver, it's kind of similar to, um, you know, Piranha Launcher. Yeah. But exactly. yeah, Piranha yeah. Launcher is, well, everyone sees it as being terrible. But it's like, <laughs> it the value launcher. you get in the long run of Piranha, Piranha Launcher is actually really good. Yeah. But Hunter is just not designed to right. play slow right. games like that. And so Hunter it just doesn't work. Whereas Vine Cleaver, Paladin has a lot more defensive tools. You have healing in Ragalilo and Tyrion, you have lots mm -hmm. more taunts. So your game's generally going to go longer and you can get the full value out of the Vine Cleaver. Mm -hmm. Also, it's really good with the uh, Tarim, obviously creating loads of dudes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I really like the Paladin list. Yeah, I, per I, I believe it performed really well for him, too. And um, I, I really like it, too. I, I think that Tarim seems to pop up a lot whenever I get the, stone the Stonehill Defenders. And mm -hmm. normally it's purely defensive. You know, many, many times, right? I'm just like, okay, I'm wanting to convert something huge into a 3 3 or a primordial drake a lot of times, too. It's just like, okay, I can make it a 3 3. Thank goodness. I don't have to, like, yeah, I don't have to kill that big ass <laughs> thing, right? So, um, I mean, you know, this is a different case. Like, this deck actually makes it more offensive. You know, when you have all like Anixia and all those 1 1s and Vine Cleaver creating those those 1 1s, too, 
you know, it allows you to do that. And not to mention it, it gives you breath and having like a wide board is so good against quest warrior, you know, just the, the taunt warrior. So, um, yeah. I think in a lot of ways, yeah, this was, this was really, really smart the way he designed just this. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the list now, like it actually seems really strong. Like you've got mm -hmm. a really good early game and then the mid game is good too. You got the steeds and then, you know, Tyrion and Nixie to kind of finish it off. Like, I kind of want to try this. Not yeah, Black Knight. <laughs> Black Knight is really interesting because when when the expansion first came out, I remember loads of people saying, "Oh, Black Knight's going to be so strong," and no one's really played it. Yeah, I used it um, a lot yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, but it's it's great against Quest Warrior. It's good against other Paladins, in mm -hmm. Tyrion or Tarim or something they've used Fiery Steed on. Uh, oh, I guess it sucks cool. against Mage. Yeah, but... that's true. Oh uh, yeah, it does. But you can afford one card. That, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a four or five. It's not. Game yeah, but I think there's quite a lot of matchups where it's it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shaman's good against could destroy thing from below or something similar. Yeah, or just Stonehill Defenders. Whatever runs Stonehill Defender, right? You at least have some kind of target yeah. with it. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, I haven't played it since the first couple weeks of the expansion. It's definitely something to revisit. He actually has Rallying Blade in here too, and I've thought about Rallying Blade like several times uh, in, in Paladin just because it just helps with all you know when when mid range was obviously really popular, or even just with with some of the shaman at times it's it's nice mm. to have that that weapon that can <laughs> chop down stuff and he doesn't have a a um uh let's see uh i mean i mean that's his only weapon actually that right like rallying blade's the only weapon he has in his deck yeah so yeah that's a just, different take on it i actually was playing with one rallying blade and one true silver oh, he's got uh, today yeah yeah he's like he's got mine clear yeah um and obviously i think true silver is just one of the best weapons in the game mm -hmm. um so it felt kind of weird to take out you know a true silver and put in a rallying blade but i feel like that that mana reduction is so clutch sometimes against aggro just having it be three mana or you can coin it out yep on two if you need to so yeah i actually really really like a, a lot of these choices that he uh that he put into the stack. Yeah, you know what's really good at doing? It's really good at chopping down the mage, the mage two threes. And the, yeah, and the mana totally. Worm. Yeah, it's really, really good for that. That um, poke damage can spiral out of control <laughs> from them, so. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, looking at some of these other decks, did you see anything else that popped out, um, Jackie? Any any of these other decks? Um, <clears throat> not particularly, just kind of a lot of standard things. Yeah. Uh, one, cool. Nyria had... Wild Pyromancer and Acolyte and his Jade Druid, which is uh, oh, a little wow. bit different. A lot of people have been playing, well, Primordial, Primordial Drake has now become like a staple in, in Jade Druid. But uh, Pyromancer and Acolyte uh, are interesting because there's like, Shaman, you don't, yes. it's not like Mage where you can keep healing up the, uh, the Pyromancer. You don't have, I mean, sorry, like, it's not like Priest where you yeah. can keep healing up the Pyromancer and you have Powered mm -hmm. Shield. Um, I mean, Earthen Scales can buff the Pyromancer, but one yeah. of Druid's problems is AoE, and I actually don't feel like Swipe is that good right now. No, I don't think it it's is. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of the reason being that Azure Drake is no longer a thing, and so spell damage Swipe barely ever happens, and there's not that many decks that have a load of one ones, and so a lot of the time you're using Swipe just to kill like one minion. Yeah, um, I, I feel like that one Pyro is just you know one board clear or you know like a, a decent size board clear for against shaman right shaman's not the greatest matchup yeah i guess shaman and mm -hmm. aggro druid are the two matchups for yeah, paramount is gonna be thing. huge yeah so he's just hedging yeah. it looks like he's hedging a bit there which is mm. not normal you know normally people would bring a jay druid and just have it counter control period right you know in, in a conquest type of tournament but yeah. um yeah in this case mm. it's or not you know just, just have it win that way instead of trying to hedge for it interesting mm. take on it uh but anyways yeah so star ladder concluded great tournament as always they you know they always do some amazing things with <laughs> with it and hopefully it'll continue on uh we had the wild tournament also which you guys alluded to because control did super well in it he made it to the finals actually right against mech nugget or at least in the qualifiers or whatever yeah he finished in the, the top two and the qualifiers so yeah. he's going to go to the the top the top eight yeah the top um, eight so which is really good yeah but watching that tournament was actually really fun because I've 
like last month because of because of the announcement of this world tournament i played a load of wild oh yeah, and it's nice. great to play with all these other cards and there's there are some decks that you see in standard and wild like pirate warriors just, it's, it's <laughs> not that different Sophian both. it's not that <laughs> but, different you know it's kind of crazy but then there's so many other things you can come back to like um there's loads of potential for nazoth there's reno decks there's mm -hmm. op cards like dr boom and zombie chow and shredder and even oh, like, yeah. it's actually really fun to play these cards again yeah watch yeah, I, 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 yeah go ahead ellie i was just gonna say i personally like love the recent spotlight on on wild i think it's it's super mm. fun you know and it, it, for whatever reason you know not that many people were kind of playing it before and i guess i, I guess the uh heroic brawl kind of kicked it mm -hmm. off yeah i um, think so and I think a lot of people have just sort of realized, hey, this is actually kind of fun. <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's play some wild. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't know if it's just because, you know, it's still fresh, you know, or feels fresh, Maybe, especially yeah. watching the, 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 the tournament. But yeah, it just felt good. You know, it was, a, a, I guess, slightly a change of pace, even though a lot of people are playing similar decks. But seeing some of the old cards, you know, I, I think just was refreshing to see. And, um, you know, I would say like being able to use all the cards isn't like this crazy exponential improvement. You know, like if we were to have every like Pirate Warrior, for instance, right? I'm looking at uh, Mech Nuggets Pirate Warrior. It's not that much better than the current one that's in standard. You know, uh, even wow. though it, it is good. I mean, it's got shit scan in it. All right. So, yeah, we're just, yeah. I mean, I mean okay. We, we can agree on that ridiculous. one. All right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but, it's broken. But uh, you know, but it's not. You know, it's still very relatable. You know, for standard players. Mm. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I hope we, well, I want to see more wild. In fact, it kind of made me think about why isn't wild just the competitive format, you know, because yeah, I mean, I think I, the, the fact that, um, Blizzard announced this tournament is, is, has been fantastic because I think a lot of the people, a lot of the reason that people haven't played wild that much is that there's no competitive incentive. There's no, mm -hmm. right. you get rank one legend and there's no real. You don't get any points for it. You don't really get anything. Um, and a lot of the tournaments that people watch are in standard. So people want to play these decks at the same tournaments. Um, so for there to be some kind of incentive to finish high in wild, and it's, I think it's attracted a lot more people to wild and loads of the pro players as well have been playing wild as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, hopefully they do more things like this and encourage more. Totally. Wild things. Yeah. Great. Wild is, oh man, it is definitely a lot of fun. And you get to play all your favorite cards that are gone now, especially Priest. I was playing a ton of Kazakas Priest when I, whenever the Tavern Hero or the Tavern uh, Heroic Tavern Brawl was out. And mm. um, I haven't gotten a chance to go back and revisit it, but you know, I still have that Priest deck that's just sitting there. That's a wild deck that I've been <laughs> definitely wanting to get back to. Uh, but yeah, kudos to those eight players. And I mean, it's like in all the regions too. So yeah. Um, you know, I think the top eight is when, whenever we'll start, you know, being able to take a really closer look at it. But, um, you know, you know, hopefully, again, like this will be the first of many things. Uh, another bit of news. Uh, so Derek from Onog uh, ended up tweeting over the weekend that Onog is shutting down, which is One Nation of Gamers. And I believe you, I don't know, may not be into the Hearthstone competitive scene, uh, One Nation of Gamers has been sponsoring these open tournaments for a long time now in, in Hearthstone. And, um, you know, they kind of started out small, but at this point, they're very big open tournaments that, that happen at, at these events. Like, they're live. Like, you can actually go and play at, at these events. Like, um, DreamHack, uh, was it not DreamHack Austin? Maybe um, South by Southwest, I think, was one of them. And, you know, they've, been, they've done like two or three this year. So it was kind of surprising. I, I didn't expect. You know that to happen given that I, I felt like the viewership and i mean they were getting you know 15,000 20,000 people watching those tournaments you know mm. and frozen did really well in a lot of them you know and and we were seeing some notable players playing in them and casting for them so uh yeah it kind of came out of nowhere and I, I feel like this is not a good thing for the hearthstone community given that you know this no. like you know this is one of the other third party <clears throat> tournament organizers that was doing stuff did they explain their reasoning like so did they make a statement of any kind uh, he i mean he might have told me a couple of things privately which I, you know i probably can't say publicly, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but to be honest he didn't tell me too much he didn't tell me too much and okay. um you know there, i don't think there was that big of an official statement outside of his tweet um mm -hmm. but yeah that's an that's a that's kind of a bummer given you know they actually had 
non-endemic sponsors too. You know, Geico was a big sponsor of that. And I know eBay was a sponsor for those tournaments too. So uh, it's one of the few events that, that had non-gaming type of sponsors. Uh, I thought he was making some pretty good, you know, head or headway there. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll find out a little bit more about it, you know, in, in the future. But, um, you know, definitely a huge thanks for, you know, Derek and, and the crew. I think it was Hannah, too, that was that was um, his partner in that and doing a lot of the, the Hearthstone tournaments just throughout the years. And, you know, I, a lot of folks, I mean, a lot of players benefited from it. You know, I, I think Frozen, again, I think Frozen's first win was a no-knock tournament. So that, that's really, really huge for, um, you know, for some of these players to get some notoriety and things like that. Uh, okay, the last thing I got is is disguise toast uh so disguise toast we we always you know he's a friend to, to the show and friend obviously a good friend too i mean i'm a good friend with him um he uh he ended up literally in blizzard jail this time around like you know we always make the joke that he was in blizzard jail because he he's always pointing out bugs and, and things like that with with the products and finding them um this particular case he ended up getting in trouble and he actually got suspended uh, because he was showing an, an exploit that was, um, you know, that that uh, was giving people free wins, or you know, like break making the game crash or making the client crash, and then giving wins to a uh, you know the person that that was causing the crash. So I think that the whole story of it was that it was posted on a forum, people were talking about it, and so Toast wanted to check it out, and he checked it out on stream, right? And you know, so a lot of people saw it. Uh, Blizzard ended up suspending him four days, and you know. That's the TLDR of it. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I guess not much to say here. It's really the the, the question to ask is whether, um, you know, whether Toast should have been suspended or, you know, given that, um, I don't know, he's kind of walked that fine line for a long time anyways. And um, yeah. so, you know, what, was it right to suspend him for, for doing that? And, you know, just, just kind of when is it the right time to suspend somebody, especially somebody popular like Toast? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I like, I, I love Toast. I do. Yeah. I love his stream. I, th I think he's great. We all love him. Yeah, exactly. We all love Toast. We, we, we really do. <laughs> um, in this particular situation, um, uh, I'm sorry, Toast, if, if you hear this. Yep. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to err on the side of, I do think the suspension was a little fair. I mean, you just have, kind of have to think about, you know, how many people, um, you know, his history reaches. And, and I, I, like you said earlier, you, um, you know, he's always walked that line of kind of showing bugs and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I get his side of it, you know, and, and I do think it's fair to a certain extent, but I think it's more as a courtesy to, to Blizzard because they kind of needed to fix it like very quickly, you know, because because his stream reaches so many people. And so maybe, you know, if he had, um, you know, kind of done it in a more sly way. He could have given them a heads up like, hey, this is well, uh, this is an issue sort of thing. I think a better way to present it is what's the difference between him doing it on stream and him making a video that gets 500,000 views anyways? That's a good point. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, would... would... He's not really going to get suspended from YouTube. But, no, um... no, I mean, but, but what he does on the YouTube videos is literally like pointing out bugs. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. Blizzard's yeah. always appreciated that. I mean, they, right. I think they value him in a way that they've, they've even said it publicly, you know, that he's our best tester essentially. Right. And he's, he's become famous for that. And you know, obviously I mean, I think that. if he, if he finds the bug and kind of shows it to Blizzard and then maybe after they've solved the bug, he brings out a video yeah. or mm -hmm. talks about it. I think that would be personally the most reasonable way to do it because if you are showing people live how to, use a bug and essentially get free wins like right. essentially essentially cheat like essentially yeah. how you can cheat the game and get loads of ranks for free um i think he should have been suspended um as much as we love toast um yeah. <laughs> like if anyone was going to point out stuff like that it would be toast yeah. but <laughs> it yeah. is essentially uh showing a load of people how they can cheat and a lot of people will do it and it will ruin the game for a lot of people so yeah i think I it's think fair that was the thing it was it was this particular bug you know showing people how to kind of abuse abuse it you know and, and get free wins and i think that's where you know blizzard was probably just like nah man you can't you can't do that so yeah. um 
like I said, love toast. I, I do see a side of it because that's you know what he's known for. Mm -hmm. But in this situation, I'm gonna have to stand by the suspension. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't see it happen live. Like everything was pulled either. so fast. Like the meta, the Reddit mm -hmm. mods pulled everything and and you know removed and banned every uh, not banned but just removed all the comments and stuff that were linking to it. So it, it was it was hard to even see what it, what it was all about. But because um, right. I know a lot of people thought it was just the shadow vision thing. You remember when he did the shadow, the endless loop type of thing, yeah, right? That would yeah. eventually break the thing. But it turned out, you know, it was something completely different. Uh, but I agree with you guys. I mean, I, I think there's a certain line that you can't cross. And I, I mean, I, I'm, I'd be shocked if he, I don't know if he agreed with it or not. I, I mean, I, I'm not sure. There was some talk that he what, didn't really agree with it. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know that for a fact. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the best, um, the, the best way to do it would be if he discovered a bug, yeah. uh, create video clips about it, report it to Blizzard, then after they fix the problem, then he posts the videos. I don't know if that's realistic, but I think that would be the best yeah. way to do it, if possible. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe they all establish some type of process moving forward. But, um, but yeah, so Toast just... Becoming even more infamous. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> infamous, he's a bad boy now, too. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think from the standpoint of uh, news, I think we're done with the news. So um, we we do have a uh, quick little trailer that we want to show from Game Coach. Again, Game Coach is sponsoring this episode. And here's a quick word from them. We'll be right back. Here at Game Coach, we have a variety of games such as League of Legends, Hearthstone, CSGO, Overwatch, and many more to come in the future. When you have picked a game of your liking, simply choose one of our fantastic coaches by clicking on his or her profile. Here you will see background information and their calendar availability for a lesson. Starting a lesson is super easy. Coordinate with your coach and meet up on Discord, and then jump on a voice channel and begin your journey to becoming legendary. Game coach. Just drew it. All right. Well, thanks again for Game Coach for sponsoring the episode. And check it out, game-coach.com, and you know, sign up for coaching uh, with the Value Town promo code, which will give you 10% off. All right, Mechatorx Workshop, guys. All right, it's been a while. This might be y'all's first time. This is your first time doing Mechatorx, right? Yeah, yeah so no, quite a, I kind of liked it. Like making your own content. Yeah, is great. It? yeah I'd love to. That. Blizzard, if you're listening, I would love to be here. To That's design. right. Yeah, That's right. All <laughs> right. I went through and like Oops. put a lot of effort into like yeah. what photos I got for it too. <laughs> right. I was like, I'm going yeah. to make this as, pr as pretty as I can. Uh, yeah, legit. it's not easy finding pictures, man. It's it's totally hard. Well, uh, I want to start off with a couple that we got um, last week, and um, just a, a you know a, a couple cards that we received from uh, some of the fans. And uh, first one we have here, and this is from Raydan, I believe, uh, just to kind of celebrate, you know, Ali and and Jackie joining the the show. We've got mm. a, a ten mana. Is it a hunter card? <laughs> What is this? This is like an aqua card. That's a terrible card. It's aqua. It's, aqua. it's a terrible card. No. no we're trying no, to bring value it. back to it. Hunter. We're trying to bring no, Hunter back, it. right? Uh, but it's a value to the town. It's a legendary. Add Jackie Chan and Ali Straza to the show. So, uh, yeah, that's nice. I love it. Oh, no, I love it. Yeah, thank thanks you very much. It. Yeah, thanks for yeah. making this. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. Feel at home now. <laughs> yeah, right. that's so cool. I'll print it out. Put it on my... I like how it's like this like... room full of gold and, and treasures and things like that. <laughs> yeah, the artwork's pretty legit. Man. I know, totally. Uh, so he had also another couple cards here that uh, I thought had a pretty a very interesting pre pre premise concept. Uh, the Gates of Ogremar and then the Gates of Stormwind. And one's a warrior, of course, with the Orgrimmar one. And then the other one is a paladin. So the Orgrimmar one reads, change the battlefield to Orgrimmar. As long as it is Orgrimmar, your minions have enraged plus two attack. And then the other one is the Gates of Stormwind. Change the battlefield to Stormwind. As long as it is Stormwind, your minions have a plus one, plus one. And I believe what he's talking about is like the bat when the battlefield, the, the actual background, you know, the, the game board mm -hmm. changes, it, it ends up buffing your characters. And it'd be kind of cool if it buffed a particular race of characters too, right? Like with 
Ogre Mario would be all the the orcs and you know things like that. <clears throat> What yeah. do you guys think of this? Yeah, this is a super cool idea. It's Especially super cool, the, right? um, I like the, the Paladin one. It's almost like in a mist collar, you play it and then yeah, all your minions yeah, yeah. in your deck become plus right. one plus one. It's like that, right. but like better. Because every minion you have <laughs> yeah. gets plus one plus one. And and then I guess if this was a thing, maybe you'd have even maybe you'd even have one for each class, and each class could change their board yeah. to a certain. Yeah, that'd be... I don't know. Yeah. I, I think the the concept of you know, I don't, we haven't really had anything related to the, to the battlefield. So I just mm -hmm. think that, you know, just coming up with this idea is super, super cool. So good job. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I think this would be sick. I don't know how you would balance it like perfectly, but I just, I like the, the idea. At least it's a start to kind of doing something super cool and different. Yeah, having it permanently upgrade your minions might be right, yeah, a little like, rough. but little uh, rough. <laughs> yeah. But if you could pick like, I guess a certain you know tribe of, of cards or um, i mean we don't have a concept of race so it, it would probably be a race sure. of cards and if you could if this yeah. was legendary i think it would be better too because you could only have That's obviously true. one of it and, and it wouldn't be as consistent but yeah I, I like that whole like teleporting to another world you know having the game board actually mm -hmm. interact with it that's actually really cool mm -hmm. and um <laughs> it would be funny if just even the little plants and stuff on the boards could do something to your cards too wouldn't that be funny if if environmentally yeah, it could start could they actually do this like i, yeah. I think it's they could do it well, it's just it would get well, away from the you... yeah. yeah you could do one for different races as well so you could have maybe even like a like a dragon's lair or something yeah, 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 yeah dragons yeah, get some kind of buff like... yeah yes yeah. molten core could be like <laughs> something ridiculously cool for uh, elementals and stuff that's but a cool yeah. idea yeah, i like I, I thought it was a great idea um so kudos to you guys, uh, or at least Radan for sending that in. Um, nice so job. next up, we've got Allie. She has two it's portals my card. there. Yeah. So the dark yes. portal. Well, yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's actually my take on what I like a new take on a warlock quest because I just don't think the warlock quest is really strong. And I was trying to think of something that can you know could be cool for warlock because we all know it's in a bad place right now. So I was sort of thinking of like an Emperor Thorison, like um, handlock style, you know, you spend the first, you know, four turns, you know, tapping, mm -hmm. um, and then you get this, you know, you open the portal and you get this three mana reduction. And I'm not sure like how, if this is just too OP or not strong enough, yeah. um, <laughs> it's I, I don't, it's I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, I just thought the idea of, you know, kind of having an Emperor Thorison type of effect on your entire hand could be, could be, could be really cool. Okay, so I this is know. a quest reward. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, okay. so open the Dark Portal is the card, and then the Dark Portal is the, it's like open the Waygate and then the yeah. Waygate. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, so that was, that yeah. was my idea. I think I, it's... Yeah, I think a cost reduction, I mean... Warlocks tend to have a ton of cards in their hands, right? I mean, it's just, right. yeah, you're yeah. always going to have eight or nine or shoot ten most of the time. So, uh, yeah, this cost reduction, I think it would be super good. <laughs> like, crazy. Well, yeah, it's it's super good. Good. Amazing good. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just play it and then it's empty. Um, like. can, I just, can I just say that Warlock has always been and will oh, probably always be my favorite class. So maybe I was, like, trying to make it a little too broken here. So maybe it needs to be... <laughs> more expensive or the reduction needs to be i less, mean but, warlock uh, needs all the help it can get right now right. maybe just smacking some op card in it could actually yeah. help a lot well it has yeah. to be more than one because you know the druid one is basically one right so yeah. um you know two or three I, yeah i mean i could see i could see that yeah they i think they, it, it, they would need it right now yeah, but mm -hmm. it would mostly go to mostly go to spells though right now i feel like there's just so many spells that in in warlock mm. that people are using um, but I like sure. it. Yeah, I think it's cool. I mean, I, I think that, I think that anything to help the request right now would be better <laughs> than yeah, what it exactly. is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, that's my take. <laughs> cool, man. No, that's definitely great. First card from Allie and <laughs> Mecha. Yes, thank awesome. you. Uh, all right, so I came up with one that was I, the name isn't the best. Okay, so I mean, I, I was trying to come up with something that's like transfusion, you know, type of thing, but I came up with Soul Fusioner and. At first, at first, I was going to say, I'm just going to call it Soul Fusion. But then I'm like, wait, okay. I have a body. I can actually call it something. It's it's actually a per, you know a thing. So I ended yeah, up calling right. it Soul Fusioner. 
Uh, it's a one drop, a one one um, body, and it's an uh, epic card. Battle cry, discard. Actually, uh, it should. The grammar is bad because I had it as two originally. Discard one card from your hand and draw one card. So um, purpose discard. is to help the the discard quest, right? And just the discard. Mm -hmm. So it helps you cycle. I mean, and, and it helps you, you know, get obviously one closer to the uh, the quest, completing the quest without actually losing a card because that that's the challenge right now, right? You have this this conflict or this conflicting type of um, gameplay, which is you, you know, discarding generally is bad for you, right? There's a few cards that may, that are good, like silverware and, and things like that. But for the most mm -hmm. part, discard is bad. But when right. you're trying to complete the quest, it's good. <laughs> and yeah. You know, yeah. So, and then you run oh, out of cards. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you, and it, you can run out of cards because you're discarding and then you have to live tap. And then it just becomes like this crazy inefficient type of loop you know that that can happen so i think more of these kind of cards that that essentially just move your timer up one you know and yeah you lose a card but you know you're getting a card back so you actually still have ammo to discard yeah it's i mean you can do some really cool stuff with it if you like uh, i mean even just like malkazar's imp coin soul yeah. fusion it would be really yeah. really nice or like just playing it on turn one and getting really lucky and pulling silverware golem <laughs> yeah exactly broken further yeah, I think it was. I originally had it as two cards, but then I was like, oh, no, that's too good. Yeah. That's way too good. <laughs> yeah. No, I like it, though. I feel like the discard, the disco lock, he needs needs something more. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like it. I feel like it's good. Yeah, I actually, one of the what the cards I've created is uh, similar to, well, similar to this in terms that it's, it's trying to improve discard warlock, but it's more of a, yeah, let's talk uh, about it. I'll, uh, it's, an aggro uh, discard card rather than a slow quest warlock card. Right. So it's Grant it's Fear, right? Grant Fear, yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. Let, me bring it up <laughs> let me bring it up here. Grant. I love Fear. how we're all trying to help warlock out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Like, help mm. They need the love Grant here. Fear. Okay, so Grant Fear, why don't you uh, describe this to us? Or just, so uh, three yeah. mana. When you play or discard this, give your minions plus one plus one. If discarded, return to your hand. So oh, you nice. can use it as three mana plus one plus one to all your minions, which is obviously pretty underpowered for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Or you can discard it and it buffs everything you have on the board and then it goes back into your hand again. So it's similar to Zavas, um, where it goes back into your hand Ooh, again. Ooh, yeah. And then, yeah so this is actually you. a really good card. I like that, yeah. I like it so much. <laughs> like no, no, no. Yeah. Let's call, let's call, let's call, let's call. <laughs> yeah. I like the name too. I like no, the name I as well. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I think it would probably end up being too OP, but yeah. But, uh, what is? Let me think. What it, if it costed four? What it? I don't know. I like it at three. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's. I mean, it's good. There's no question. It's good. I don't know if it's OP mm. though. I mean, you because you just go lock is. Yeah. I feel like Disco Lock is not in a good spot. So if you gave it a card like this, like even though this might be really good, I don't think it would like break the, the meta. You know, like it'd be it'd be okay. Yeah. So I, I love it. I think it's. Great. I think one of the problems with Disco Lock is that even in in a more aggressive list, is that you don't have many cards you want to discard. You literally only have right. Silver Golem and then Zabas. True. There's between three True. cards in your entire deck that you actually want to discard. So I think if they brought out one more card that. Uh, was good to discard so you have five i think that would sig like significantly improve the deck and maybe something like this which is a, a bit different in like buffing instead of actually putting a minion on the board yeah. there. i mean i I, I, I like those i mean I, I like this card a lot too because it has um you know not only are do you benefit from discarding this card you know like there's some cards where you discard it and it just comes back on the board right and, and it's very very clear the nice thing about this is that there's two elements of preparing to play this card or to discard this card, which is you have to put some minions on the board, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you're talking about giving your minions in your hand, plus one, plus one, but I was assuming it was something on the board. So you have to prepare the board to be a certain way, and then you have to prepare your hand to be a certain way so you can discard it, right? So from a skill cap standpoint, it's it's very high, you know, in trying to optimize yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So I, I do like that. I, I like that a lot. And Disco Lock has a hard time keeping minions on the board, so... I don't even yeah, think a plus yeah. one plus one would be that crazy power. Yeah, I mean, you could use your soul fusion or on turn That's one. Right. That's right. Just go on Grand Fear and have a one mana two two. <laughs> You'd be over. Yeah. Totally over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
Um, yeah, nicely okay. done. I like I it. Like yeah, I really like this card. This card is really good. Um, okay, so we have a, I have another card here that was more of a fun card, but it's called Sir Goya. <laughs> so he's, Sir Goya. He's a he's a panda. Like he's oh. he's the husband of Madame Goya, who who has to go to war a lot. But Sir Goya goes to war a lot, so Madame Goya is at home, obviously running her brothel. Of, of pandas or, what, or whatever it is <laughs> that she's running. No, I don't think she runs a brawl. She runs some kind of drug ring or something. I, I forget what it is. But um, yeah, so Sir Goya is you know associated with Madame Goya, but uh, he's a three mana, three, four. Uh, it's a classless card, so it's a neutral card. And it's a, it's a legend, so you can't run two of them. Battle Cry, swap a random minion, a random friendly minion with a random enemy minion. So I was originally gonna, I was gonna limit it to like a certain classes. I just couldn't decide what class to limit it to. So uh, I figured, okay, I will just throw it out there as a neutral. And then of course, there's some classes that are OP, Oof. like shaman, right, or or uh, paladin that can hero power and throw stuff out and trade with you, kind of thing. But um, but yeah, so it's meant to be a crazy powerful card. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean I, I like it. I like it, but it it definitely seems. Like Sylvana, Sylvanas, powerful. Like you know what yeah, I mean. Like that yeah. type of power level. Yeah, I mean you have to swap um, a minion, so you'll have to have a minion on the board, and that's why I mean like, like people that can like the classes that can hero power obviously is hugely beneficial. But if mm -hmm. we made it one of the other classes, I, I couldn't decide which class. So maybe we can decide. But you know, like a, like mm. a druid. Okay, I see what you're like saying. A, yeah, something. It might else. be too good as a new yeah, show. Yeah, shaman and paladin. It would probably be just. just Broken, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so it's like you're swapping it in on the board. So they have to have a minion, and you have yeah, to have a minion. So, yeah, yeah. You both have to have a minion, right? And right. you know, there'll be moments where obviously it'll be RNG-ish, you know, type of thing. You know, where yeah, you're, yeah. But um, it could be good with um, you know, the five mana two two that deals five damage and then has a death rattle deal five to your face. Oh yeah, bomb. yeah, yeah. Oh my god, what? Is it bomb squad or is it? It yeah, might be bomb, bomb Squad. Yeah, yeah, I think bomb. it's Bomb Squad. Bomb squad. Yeah, but it'd be, yeah, it's Bomb it's Squad. It's the worst thing really good with that. Portal. But... <laughs> That's the only thing I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be yeah, pretty cool. Oh my cool. gosh. That could be pretty no, cool. No, I, li I like it though. Like, you could do some crazy things, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. This might be, not be the best implementation of it, but I like something about swapping things. Um, yeah. Maybe if it was something where it's like, you can't swap things that you play that turn. You can only swap things that, that mm -hmm. were on the board already. Um, but okay. there's something to do with that, you know, like, like manipulating I mean, in that way. In like a paladin or a shaman, this would literally be like a, a five mana mind control, but with yeah. a three, four body attached, exactly. right? Because you steal whatever you like. So this would have to be broken in it's paladin like, or it's shaman. Like mind control, yeah. at least I got a totem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, so that's a, yeah, it, 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 it's probably too overpowered. But I, I figured the idea was kind of a fun one. Um, yeah. and then I love the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. The the name I think is the best part of it. <laughs> the Sir Goya. Yeah. Sir Goya. <laughs> yes. Okay, Jackie, you've got one last one here, which is uh Raptor Egg. Yes, we got we Ra Jackie coming up with another egg for but yeah, actually this has to be some kind of egg. Yeah, this one's for the hunter class though. This one's not for the druid. <laughs> so Yeah, so I think one of the main problems with Hunter right now is Hunter relies on being ahead, but Hunter isn't good enough at getting ahead. So having a one drop that is kind of difficult to remove is, I think, really good. Because you have, like, Alley Cat right now, but then if you're against Pirate Warrior and they have an Azoth first mate, you just instantly lose. Because they right. daggy one of them and then patches the other one, and then the Pirate Warrior just snowballs from there, and Hunter doesn't really have a chance. Whereas this isn't really threatening so it wouldn't be like a, a face hunter deck but it's more of a, like a, a mid-range hunter card but it's like something you can play on turn one and then on turn two do something like dire wolf maybe um and then pop it and then have a nice tempo swing on turn two the raptors would probably be beasts um but it could even be like like a more, more token style uh hunter where you can play like defender of argus that kind of thing as well maybe at that at that point though would it be more aggro than Mid-range? Because I feel like if you're going to play Dire Wolves and stuff, I feel like maybe. I like it, though. I think it's really so, cool. I mean, how how is, is this better or worse than Alley Cat? I think it's better. You really? I think it's better. You actually think it's I better? I mean, if you're, if you're running a certain style of deck. So if you're playing things right. like Ar Argus's and Dire Wolves and mm -hmm. 
uh, things of. I mean, maybe the egg could even be a beast, and then you could use like uh, cracking razor more on it. Yeah, yeah, that's there you go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I mean, that, that would, would make, make it more it interesting. Good enough. But, I think um, hyena dangerous, even more dangerous too. So. Yeah, but I think that the, one of the problems with Hunter now is just having minions that stick on the board, so you can kind of start to snowboard. And Hunter can't do that as well as other classes. So having something that's sticky without just giving them like a, a one mana two three or something, um, I think mm -hmm. is kind of the way Hunter should go to. Yeah, I mean, Ali can into yeah. you know Razor Mall. That's that's a really good play. Um, it's just against. Yeah. Warrior, it's if not. it survives, it's just not good against like, warrior. Yeah, it, and maelstrom portal against yeah, um, yeah. shamans. So that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's like they need a mm. one two, but yeah, I, I like that. I mean, I I definitely like the fact that it, it at least protects against maelstrom too. Um, so yeah, this and like going second is kind of awkward if you have one drops. Like you, you like they'll play their one drop, then you play alley cat, and then they'll just kill both your alley cats, and then it's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's kind of awkward. So, so another grandmother essentially. This is almost very similar to a grandmother, that um, mm. you know. That, yeah. But you'd have to buff this though. You wouldn't be able to attack this unless you, you buffed it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I, I definitely hunter needs something. Absolutely. <laughs> if it was a beast, I think it was a beast. It make a huge difference, like having the, the razor yeah. for sure. Yeah, it probably would. That, but... You can play razor more. You can use hand master on it. Timber yeah. wolf would work with it. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can also raptor reg turn one and then coin and get leoc turn two. It seems good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's actually true. Forgot about the animal camp companion synergy there. That's <laughs> true. Always leoc, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> always leoc. That's the one that always comes out. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, that that concludes Mechatorx Workshop. Uh, again, um, you know, we're starting it up. All the patrons definitely send your uh, cards in, and we'll obviously patrons always get first priority. But um, you know, if you're a fan also and want to send in some of your cards, go ahead and do that too. We'll we'll definitely take a look, and if uh, it seems like something cool, we'll definitely show it that week. Let's. Talk some questions, some Q&A from uh, just a mixture, like some of our patrons and some of our um, just regulars out there. And Ahmed N, who is our regular emailer, has a question. What are the drawbacks for Blizzard for having a free card rotation when some epics and legend cards are available to try for a week? So um, uh, is there any drawbacks for them to, you know, give us like these type of trial you know, like some games like MOBAs, right? They let you try out characters mm -hmm. for a week or two for free. And then the whole point is to try to entice you to purchase them, right? Or to, to buy it with whatever currency that you have. Um, should they do that with Hearthstone cards? I don't know how this would work, really, in a card game. I'm, I'm trying... I'm oh, trying yeah, to. I think it'd be pretty easy. They would just make everybody has the ability to play. Right, um, right. You know, whatever, yeah, I think right? um, it would. I mean, they'd probably like, make less money. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably yeah. the main reason for not doing it. Yeah. Um, I think it would also. I think make less people play arena um, because a lot okay. of the reason people play arena is to play these cards that they don't have. Um, so that could be one potential downside. Okay, I. I don't know. But I don't see much of. I don't see much of a downside. I think. Yeah. Oh, I, I, okay, another downside. Um, as soon as you do that, everyone's going to be playing the same deck. Um, everyone's going to be. Yeah, as soon as yeah, you make yeah. uh, Antonidas free, everyone's going to be playing Antonidas. Uh, right. Uh, like, okay. I would say that's a neg. Okay, so I would say that's the one negative for that is that you mm. you could have this this migration to certain decks and really throw off just all, all the data, right? Like even if you have this kind mm. of spike in the data, it, it does throw off the entire set for the month, you know? So mm -hmm. um, it, it, it would uh, manipulate in that way. But I don't know, I feel like it's not a bad idea. I mean, for, I, I mean, just my gut reaction to it is that it, it doesn't seem like it would be that bad of an idea. Uh, and I don't, I don't think it would affect Arena so much if it's just like one card, you know, like a different week, yeah. it's just like one card. And you could be careful about it too. Like if you picked a certain card, it's kind of like they're really careful with giving away the golden free card right now, right? If they were mm -hmm. careful about it too, then they, they might, it might not be such huge swings, you know, in, in certain decks. And um, I think it does encourage people to buy, you know, more 
packs and things. If they play with a card for a week and they really enjoy some some priest deck, let's say let's say we talk about a deck on this show and then they're able to build it with this free card, and then like a week later they can't play it anymore. Then I, I feel like people would be enticed to to pay and try to get some dust to to, to build. That is it. true, actually. Yeah. I didn't look really. Uh, I didn't look at it from that side, but and I guess it would just be nice for players <laughs> to you know to. If they, you know, if they can't afford to get that legendary and they can play with this really cool, you know, new card. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I don't really see, like, too many major downsides. It's just a matter of, you know, they do it or not. But, I don't yeah. know. But, um... I mean, I think it's a case of if they make lots, lots of cards free for a week, for example, then, um, people will think, oh, there, there's loads of cards that are going to be free this week. Oh, I'll yeah. try and lift different loads mm -hmm. next week, uh, and I'll never need to buy any packs ever again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or they, they can either bunch. do it, yeah. or they can do it with very few, um, in which case it will be the problem of, if they did say two or three, um, those cards would suddenly see a lot of play, and a yeah. lot of people would be... Do you ever yeah. think that this could be, like... I don't know if this is a terrible idea or not, uh, but promo for a legendary in the new expansion, like they let people like play with with, no, they with, did with Megasaur type. Like they well, oh, Volcano Oh, sorry, Volcanosaur. they already did that. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. That, they did do this. It, uh, that was days. really good though. Yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I, for, yeah. I, I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, no, but, but yeah, yeah, to so your point, Ali, it, it works mm -hmm. well. It, it works yeah. really well. Yeah. And that card even I mean, wasn't necessarily that good. I mean, it was okay. It's an okay card, but it's not like one of the mm -hmm. best cards. And we everybody yeah. was playing it. So yeah, I mean that's a quite a good point actually because when that did, it, it was it was like a two or three day period where there was just volcano soul that you could play, and everyone <laughs> yeah. was trying it. I was out of town, so I couldn't do it. Yeah, it I was great. I was trying like Kuna Aviana volcano soul druid. Like it was great. So maybe I mean, <laughs> with that kind of reasoning, maybe it could be good if it was if it, it would have to be kind of a neutral card that they mm -hmm. allowed yeah. to be played every week that could maybe be played in a few different decks rather mm -hmm. than be a very specific card that's yeah um good at one specific thing yeah yeah uh so yeah thanks for the question ahmed uh brenton asks here's the storm 2.0 seems to be a huge success which i agree with that it seems like a lot of people going back to playing here's the storm now I enjoyed the game before, but now I'm really loving it. The loot boxes seem quite generous, and the UI has improved, and things seem to be so much more fun and intuitive. On the other hand, <laughs> Hearthstone seems quite stingy to me, as it's it's been from a or as if it was from a different company. Uh, he goes on, and I understand CCG mentality that collecting cards is part of the fun. And I remember people complaining, and he, he kind of goes on and talks about like different things, um, just about I guess you know, paying for, just paying for certain things of Hearthstone. And yeah. uh, anyways, he concludes with, do you think that Hearthstone could benefit from something similar to Heroes of the Storm 2.0? If so, what would you like to see in Hearthstone 2.0? Um, can I? Yeah, go for it. Can I say, can I say this? I think yeah. the, the, the reason why they're doing this is Hearthstone's in a really good spot. You know, they just had 70 million uh, yeah. users accounts, or whatever accounts, it was. Yeah. Accounts, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think with Heroes of the Storm 2.0, like I don't think Heroes of the Storm was in that great of a position. So they're doing all of this stuff to promote you to play Heroes of the Storm 2.0. You know, so I feel like that's kind of, you know, like Hearthstone is on the stingier side, but it can afford to be on the stingier side because it's, you know, doing better. But I, like I said, I think Heroes of the Storm 2.0, like I even played it and I've never played Heroes of the Storm before. And I had, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a lot of fun. Fun. Like I actually really really enjoyed it, but I feel like they're they're doing all of these things to to promote people to play. So I that I don't, yeah, yeah, that's just kind of my. my I mean, I I've, I've never played Heroes of the Storm. Do, could you guys briefly explain what they've kind of done or brought out new, or is it is there anything changed, or is it just the same as it used to be? Um, so I, I, I'm not an expert in Heroes of the Storm either. Like, you know, no, I, I've I, only played it to like complete right. quests and, you know, things for Overwatch and, and even yeah. Hearthstone whenever there, there is promotional stuff. But, um, I mean, they definitely do have loot boxes and that kind of system. And it seems like you do just get more stuff, you know, like more mm -hmm. stuff than Overwatch, right. more stuff than, than Hearthstone from these loot boxes. And, you know, just when you win and you, you're coming back from a Was long time ago. I, I mean, I think you do get stuff, but you know, you've gotten stuff before. But I, I mean, like, again, I can't really speak to how the frequencies change or things like that. Um, right. I mean, I feel like the UI is a little bit different. It, it's still not. I still don't love the UI, to be honest. Of Heroes of the Storm, I, I don't feel like it's 
I don't know. It seems less. Um, how do I put it? I don't want to say like it's it's more amateur looking, but it, it doesn't look as <laughs> as refined. It just does. It doesn't like to me. Right. You know whether it's like the font or just just whatever it is. It just doesn't look as styl stylized as Hearthstone and Overwatch is. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think you know that's part of it. You know I'm not sure. Anyways, like I don't know, but for sure I've heard feedback that they, a lot of people like the changes. And, um, you know, I, I think the number of players in Heroes of the Storm has gone up uh, probably a, a decent yeah. amount recently. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably, it, they would probably, if Hearthstone suddenly had a massive decline of players and it started going down the drain, yeah. then, you know, they'd probably do something similar. Or they'd do something where they give players cards or it mm -hmm. costs less money and kind of, to try and get people back into the game. But right now, they don't need to do that. Exactly, it's expensive yeah. as hell, and people are still playing the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think Blizzard just don't really have a reason to do that. I completely agree that it is, uh, it is pretty expensive to... Uh, it's not ideal. Yeah. Right now. So but, I, brought, uh, I brought up this exact idea uh, back when... When did I bring up this idea? I think it was around Gadgetzan. Or maybe before Gadget, when people were just very unhappy. Like, it was during a time where a lot of, you know, like, most of the player base was just, at least the profession, the competitive Bader player base reason. was very, yeah, <laughs> very unhappy. And I brought up the fact, uh, the the idea that I think Hearthstone 2.0 uh, could be something that they consider. And, you know, just as a, a separate product release. You know, and the reason I brought it up at the time was just that, you know, if they felt that they were in a place where a lot of legacy cards, you know, a lot of the, the classic cards that they just felt they, they can't just get rid of, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. they feel like they're just so far down it, they're, they're, that there are there is some content that they just can't get rid of, then coming out with a completely new product is a way to start over, you know, and, and, and do that, you know, and get rid of some of those mistakes and just start from, you know, start from scratch. Now, if you were to do that, you have to include huge features, you know, like tournament mode and, you know, things yeah. that aren't currently in the game uh, to, to pull that off, you know, to actually have the, the playing community, you know, not rage on you like you're greedy bastards. I can't believe you're like, you know, <laughs> creating a whole new game and all of us that have spent thousands of dollars have to spend, more, you know, more money just like this guy over here. So, um, uh, you know that that's the biggest negative to it is that people are going to feel like oh my god we've already invested this much money and now we got to like buy it again it's yeah. crazy but i think from a standpoint of correcting mistakes and things like that you know that's a that's a, a method of doing that i feel like their trans transition to to doing the whole standard and wild thing and also mm -hmm. rotating mm -hmm. cards into the hall of fame is kind of their happy medium take on a person 2.0 you know sort of in a little, in a little mm. respect yeah yeah and i i'm so you know that was six months ago you know what i mean i think right mm -hmm. now with the current state of it they've done a lot they've done a ton in the last six months you know in terms okay. of you know giving us stuff obviously the reset you know these new cards and you know there's different concepts and things that they're trying um you know i, I think the the general state of hearthstone's improved except for arena <laughs> the arena arena <laughs> goes <from> like that's <laughs> <laughs> so wrong no 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 okay outside arena i think the general state of hearthstone is so good you know is much better than it was so yeah, i agree i don't think we're in yeah. that state where we need a hearthstone 2.0 right now no i mean i think there was a phase where hearthstone did go for a bit of a lull when shaman just dominated everything um ladder and tournaments and it was a bit uh frustrating Mm -hmm. But right now, Hearthstone is great. There's so much stuff to do, so many different decks. Yeah, Hearthstone is great right now. I, I love Hearthstone. 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 Every, like, single, every single time I like play the game, I'm like, oh, what about that? Or I haven't done that yet. Yeah, oh, exactly. I need to play this. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think the sad truth is just um, Blizzard have no need to give you anything because people are spending money, people exactly. are still playing the game. Mm -hmm. um, they have no reason to to give you stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah capitalism yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. capitalism yeah 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 Corporation, um, that's how it works, right? yeah yeah so uh, i think that's the only questions that we've got for this week so if you guys want to email them again email them to valuetown at chamev.tv and we'll we'll check them out uh 
One thing I do want to do is uh, give a shout out to some of the iTunes folks that have left us five star reviews. For those of you who might not know, Valley Town is an audio podcast too, so you can find us on your, you know, all your Apple devices on iTunes as well as Google Play and SoundCloud too. If you just want to listen to us on your PC, but uh, one way to help the show, you know, if you can't contribute to the Patreon, is to just go to iTunes, take a minute or two, leave us a nice, you know, five star review, and you know. Lots of people leave these awesome messages for us too. That makes us feel good. And I want to give a shout out to Go Tommy Goes and Breakdown One Fourteen for doing that. Uh, really appreciate it, guys. And it helps people find Value Town when they're searching for Hearthstone uh, in, in iTunes because SEO, all that good stuff. I'm not sure we know how it works, but I'm sure these ratings help it. I'm just assuming that it probably <laughs> helps. So if you can help out that way, that would be amazing. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that's going to be it for this week. Um, that's a wrap. Yeah, yeah that's a wrap. Uh, Jackie, want to do some shout outs? Where can people find you outside of this channel that we're watching the show? Um, <laughs> uh, F2K underscore Jackie is my, uh, my Twitter where I post all my decks, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Um, obviously my channel, I always stream regularly and, uh, great to be on the show permanently. Yes. It's, uh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, you're starting right. to get relaxed. Oh, you know, kind of shout out to Page Karma as ever, yes. helping us live yeah. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, F2K. both of these. Guys here. That's right. Yeah, F2K. Okay. Uh, um, Allie, want to do some shout outs? Yeah, so uh, just twitch.tv slash Ali Straza. If you can spell Straza correctly, you know, a lot of people <laughs> spell it wrong. But um, yeah, so I stream Monday to Friday, 8 to 2, and my Twitter is F2K underscore Alley as well. So yeah, You can see yeah. it right there, too. It's like, yeah, it's oh, right there. It's right, right there. That's right. It's kind of easy to remember Jackie's mind because we got the, the F2K. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, anyway, thank you. Yeah, so. Awesome. I want to give a shout out to just to both of you guys for doing the show this week with me and everybody for watching. Uh, I'm going to be in. in well, I'm going to be flying out to E3 and doing a streamer showdown on Thursday uh, at 4 p.m. on the Twitch channel. So twitch.tv slash twitch. And we'll actually be on the Twitch stage live at E3. It'll be our first live streamer showdown. So we're super excited to get a chance to do that. DJ Weed's going to be hosting. We're going to have Matt Pat, who's a huge YouTuber, uh, and uh, Ezekiel the Third, who's on um, just some of the big podcasts, just the general gaming podcast. And... Uh, also, uh, Kelly, Kelly Link, who's a, one of the, the hosts that you see a lot on Twitch. So they're going to be playing, and we're going to be doing just E3-like questions in general gaming. So, um, you know, we've, you, you guys have always seen the Hearthstone one, but we have, you know, different editions, and this one's just going to be our first. This is actually going to be our first general gaming one. So the, the questions have been really hard to, to write, I have to admit. It's been super hard, like, compared to Hearthstone, but I think we've come up with a, a, a good set. So really excited about that. Definitely tune in there. Uh, you can find the, the all the VODs for this show if you missed any of the show on youtube.com slash chamanv. So check that out or any of our previous shows like last week or whatever. They're all there. And you can follow uh, the show Twitter at ValueTownGG as well as myself, chamanv. And um, one last shout out, obviously, to Game Coach for sponsoring the show again and our patrons. You guys are the best. And, um, you know, definitely check that out at patreon.com slash value town. That's going to be it, guys, for this week. So for Jackie, Allie, and myself, Champion V, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.